my shop, Rob from Woodsy Summercraft here. Today I'm excited because I've got two new products that I want to show to you that I'm manufacturing right here at Woodsy Summercraft. And back to this, I'm looking forward to using these from now on. My own products made right here in Canada. Um, it's going to bring savings to my customers in Canada um, and hopefully uh, a bunch of people. You guys, if you're interested, uh, go to my website. Website will be in the link below and uh, they'll be available there. Uh, currently just for Canada I don't know if I'll branch out into the US or anywhere else uh, because there are alternatives there but there really is only this that's Canadian made so let's hope that this takes off I really hope it does so like I said I have this piece of uh, cherry it's got a few check marks here but I think that's gonna get turned away a little bit of bark here that's gonna get turned away but the rest of it looks pretty pretty nice. Cherry is nice wood. So we'll get this turned rough round and we'll put a tenon on the one end. We'll grab it with a chuck. We'll drill the center out and then we'll start shaping. is I'm going to take this Eric Hill EWM01 wood moisture meter once again and we'll check the moisture content now so I'm going to turn it on and just for fun you can try it on M1 and M2 but M1 is what it said for cherry so we'll have a look at that can you see that I don't know if you can see that I've still got no reading at all so this piece of wood is dry stable and it shouldn't move shouldn't crack any further so that's good information again if I lick my finger it goes up to 35 40 on the scale so yeah this is definitely worth having in the shop especially when you're dealing with your own wood that you process yourself wanted and now I'm just going to drill the top and then we'll do some sanding final shaping here do some sanding uh, before we seal it and use the superior grit Canadian superior grit and a Hampshire sheen finish so we're going to bring the speed down slower decided to thin this neck just a little bit more so I put some tailstock support to reduce the vibration. I have sanded this uh, 100 grit, 120, 150 and 180. Now I sand with the lathe rotating in reverse with my dust collector on 
and then when I stop each grit I sand with the grain and then the next grit I have to make sure that when I'm doing radial sanding that it removes all of the cross sanding marks from the previous grit once those have gone then I know that that grit's done its job then I go with the grain again and I do that through each grit so 100, 120, 150, 180 and now we're going to do the same with 220 and this is my last grit I'm not going to go any higher than 220 just as a test and to show you the benefits of less sanding um, with and using um, superior grit to uh, get a superior finish so this is 220 now doing regular sanding on the lathe the lathe spinning at about 250 250 rpm you don't want to go fast you don't want the sandpaper to get hot keep it moving and it shouldn't take long at this point we're pretty fine there's no tear out there's no tool marks you've got to make sure they're gone with your low grit if there are any i had a few well, those are all gone now it's looking pretty good there's a small small crack there i think you can see that I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's just, it's closed, but it's a small crack. I'm looking for sanding marks, radial or cross grain sanding marks. So if I go with the grain now, that will help remove any radial sanding marks that there might be. And that's generally the direction you want to sand anyway, in the direction of the grain. I didn't put any oil on this or anything. I just sanded, dry sanded the whole way up to 220 grit. Okay, we'll give it a quick wipe with a clean cloth. It's still in reverse. Just get some of the dust off. Just put it in forward. And we'll give it a quick spray. Denatured alcohol. Just to get any muck off. That's about it. There's nothing left coming off the, on the towel. Okay, so this is the cellulose-based Mylan sanding sealer. We're going to apply that to the whole piece with the lathe standing still. Make sure it soaks into the grain, especially the end grain if there is any. This is mostly side grain because uh, because it's a spindle. But this will be end grain in here and in the top. I'll give that a few minutes to dry and I might give it one more coat. It's important that before you go to the next step that this is dry. And that will probably fill that crack in as well. That little little tiny crack there, that will fill that in. That's good. Okay, give that a few minutes now to dry again, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, that's been a few minutes it's dry now what I always do is take um, an abrasive pad scouring pad just to denib this because if there's any little raised areas or a little bit of a thicker sealer than than the majority of it 
that could show up so basically this brings it back down to an even surface just so that it's all looking the same and you can go with the grain as well with this same thing same thing as sanding you're essentially making sure that it looks good you've got to keep keep observing the quality of the finish as you're going through the steps because if you miss a spot then the next step is not going to remove it you might have to back up a step right I am ready now to use Canadian Superior Original Grit there she is with a clean paper towel take a dollop of that and then apply it over the whole piece And then we're going to put this on slow speed because it will fling at you. Slow speed and then now I'm just going to work that in for a, for a couple of minutes. And eventually I'll be increasing the speed. As it's doing its job. Start using a fresher piece of towel. Okay, I'm going to use a fresh piece of paper towel now. Now this is, I'm just going to go with the one coat of Superior Grit. You could do it like every other one and you could use multiple uh, passes with this if you wanted. I'm going to increase the speed now to a thousand. And let's take a look at that. That is really smooth. Very smooth. So that is the original, and then now we're going to move on to the, the microfine. Now microfine really is, I wouldn't say it's necessarily for cherry, it would be more for the hardwoods, like ebony, and um, really, really tight grain woods. That's really what it's intended for. You can use it on everything though, it's uh, going to give you a finer finish. Again, bring the speed down, wipe it all over. Okay, and with speed down slow, I'm going to start working that in. Slowly bring the speed up. Like liquid sandpaper. Just like that. Bring the speed up a little bit more. I'm at 700. And just like the original grit, you could also do multiple passes with the microfine as well to get even better results but this is just to show you one pass one coat from 220 grit bring it up to about a thousand rpm now removing the product and we'll do one last wipe over with a clean towel and there it is 
the micro fine finish. Now we're going to put Hampshire Sheen gloss on. I'm going to wipe a thin layer all over the whole piece. And a mistake a lot of people make is they put it on and they remove it right away. You've got to let the solvents vap off. So apply it and then leave it for a few minutes until it's dry and tacky. So wipe it all over and then just leave it for a few minutes. Put the lid back on the product so the product doesn't dry up. And then just leave it. Okay, that's been a couple of minutes. I'm going to start burnishing that in. Should be a bit grabby with the paper. This I usually do put two coats on. But you could just put one coat on. I think we'll just go with one coat for this for this video. So you can see it's one coat of Superior Grit Original, one coat of Superior Grit Microfine, and then one coat of Hampshire Sheen Gloss, followed by Hampshire Sheen Microcrystalline. Now don't get it mixed up with Microfine and Microcrystalline. They're two completely different products. Just make sure there's no residue coming off. Okay, that's good. Nothing else is coming off. Nice and shiny. Yeah, that's nice and shiny. And now we're going to put a finishing coat on. Microcrystalline is a high melt temperature wax. So it doesn't really give it additional gloss, it gives it protection. It's the Hampshire Sheen gloss that gives it the gloss. But it's all about the finish. You can turn something round, but if you don't sand it properly and you don't seal it, and you don't go through the correct steps you, it's it's going to be frustrating because you're going to have a hard time to get a decent finish so there are lots of products out there on the market superior grit is brand new it's canadian manufactured right here at woodley summercraft and this is really the first live demonstration i'm well, it's not live, but it's uh, <laughs> the first demonstration that I'm doing. So I've applied microcrystalline wax, the high melt temp wax, all over the piece. I'm going to let that dry now. Give it a few minutes. Let the solvents vap off. Otherwise, if you don't, if you go and wipe it in now, you're just going to rub all that wax right back off. The solvent will pull the wax out. So you need to let that vap off. just takes a couple of minutes. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes and now this is dry and tacky. And I'm going to start buffing that in, really gentle with the paper towel. Just buffing it into the wood really gently. You can see it's already beginning to bring the shine up again. And this is going to be a longer lasting finish than beeswax based products because the waxes that are in the Hampshire Sheen are high melt temp. The superior grit is beeswax based. It's not a finish, that's a sanding paste. So don't get mixed up. Don't think you're finished because it's glossy. You have to make sure you go through the right steps. And it's really not that difficult. If you go to my website, there's actually a a link that tells you, explains to you how to use all the products except Superior Grit because that's not in 
it's not in there yet but uh, Superior Grip Microfine is actually going to be released today now that I'm fully satisfied with it. And there it is with the finish that we got there. Now what I'm going to do is part this off. Thanks for watching. If you're still here, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, there it is, little twig pot there, it's made of cherry, that was processed by myself probably three years ago. Checked with the moisture meter, the uh, Eric Hill moisture meter, and uh, finished with Canadian-made Superior Grip. Link there. Maybe there's a picture there. I don't know. Um, very very happy with the results this was sanded literally to 220 grit only but you have to go through the grits properly so start where you think you need to start make sure you get rid of all the tool marks tear out or anything there don't move up until you've done that then move up gradually through each grit make sure you sand it properly with the grain if you can get rid of those get rid of those sanding marks boys Thanks for watching. I'm going to leave a couple of photographs at the end. Really appreciate you watching. And uh, especially to you Canadians right now. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> I hope you uh, consider this as a new product, abrasive paste. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.